Welcome everyone, this is Sleepless Running, and I'm back for another of my monthly Battle Mech ranking lists. This time I'm going to be doing the Innisphere Mechs from Technical Readout 3050 Upgrade, but I'm only going to do the base mechs mentioned in the book itself. None of the variants listed, just the mech itself that's shown in the book. I've set my categories up this time as Stellar, truly amazing mechs that are really good. Amazing. Good mechs. I know I said amazing, but there was an A there, and I decided to go with amazing, so yay. Good. Middle line, basic. They're going to get the job done kind of mechs. They're not going to be the best. They're not going to be the worst, but they're there to do the heavy lifting. Most of the mechs probably should fall in this category, I'm hoping. Then we've got niche. Mechs that are very much only good in one specific role. That don't really have a lot of play outside their role. And then depressing. These are mechs that just depress me, that don't make me happy in any way, shape, or form. Remember, this is an opinion list. I could be terribly wrong, according to you, which is just fine, which is why you should be commenting below. With all that said, let's get rolling with the very first mech out the gate, the Flea FLE-17. 20 tons, 690 with mask on a 12, so mask is nice on it. Uh, it does have Indo Steel, which is a nice uh, little perk. This Capellan made mech has got a good load of weaponry two medium pulse lasers and a flamer. It has two rear facing small lasers, which again boggles my mind as to why you'd ever do that. But it has one major downside single heat sink still, which I'm thinking might be a thing that Capella didn't have access to when they were building this, or designing this mech. So to me, that does make it less good though. Because it can really only fire the two medium pulses and run at the same time in order to keep its heat balanced. You can cook some, but as far as I'm concerned, the flamer is really just an anti-infantry weapon anyways. Although it can, if you're using the optional rules, it can do heat and damage, which is really good. But for three heat, it's just so-so with a very short range. So it's mainly pretty heat efficient overall because two medium pulse lasers and running, that's what you're going to be working with. Which, in my opinion, makes it better than like 30, 25 stingers and wasps that share the same speed profile. So, I'm going to actually put this flea into the amazing category. It's better than just basic. It would be much better if it had doubles. Just so it could then light show everything all the time. But it doesn't, so it's going there. If you're wondering, I'm literally sitting here with my book. And I'm just going to go through each page by page through my book. Next, we have the Hornet. The HNT-171. This is a slow 20-ton mech. 583. That's just terrible. In its defense, it does carry an LRM-5, so it's mainly a plinking long-range support mech. Uh, which is really all I can see this thing being. It's got an AMS and a medium laser. And relatively heavy armor for its tonnage. It does have Indo Steel, which is good, but it's niche. I think this falls into the niche category of it's a very light, cheap LRM providing mech. The Commando 5S, C O M 5S. Indo Steel, 6.9, the same speed I had beforehand. 25 tonner. A little bit light in the armor, but it's not bad. I mean, it's got an SRM 6 with an Artemis 4 FCS and a Streak 2 launcher. With a medium laser. That's overall pretty good. I mean, that's that's nice little mech. I like the Commando. It also has ferrofibrous armor, which is means it gets a little bit more bang for its buck, but this is inner sphere ferrofibrous, so it's not gonna be hot in the first place. But I think I'm gonna put this little commando up to amazing. Cause I like it. That, that that's that's a well rounded little mech. The Falcon. The FLC four P Falcon. 30 tons, 695. I like that movement profile because you really only need the five movement points of jumping to get it good. Got good armor. It's lacking Indo Steel and it's lacking Ferro Fibrous, which I do find depressing. It also doesn't have double heat sinks. Again, kind of depressing. And it's got a really light weapons loadout. We're talking a medium pulse laser, two small lasers, and AMS. That's only like, what, four tons of weaponry? That's really light. I I don't know. This thing seems like this is pretty much a basic mech. It's got the 
heat sinks to handle it all, but if it had doubles, it could have done better. It's got good armor. It's just, it doesn't seem to shine. The Firefly FFL-4B. Here we've got a mech that's another 30-tonner. Better armor than the Falcon. 584, so slower. And that 4 is a bad number on there. 585, much better than 584. It's another light mech with an AMS. What is up with these light mechs having AMS? I, I mean, yay, that's fine. But it's kind of weird. It mounts 3 medium lasers, an LRM-5, and an AMS. If it didn't have the AMS, it could handle, like, another heat sink, and it could have that extra half ton for the jump jet, and it'd be much better, I think, overall. But, whatever. It's, again, no upgraded tech, though. No Indosteel, no Ferrofibers, no doubles. No XL. It's just a wibbly mech. I mean, I, I want to like it, but it's too slow for its tonnage, in my opinion. I think this is a basic mech. It could be better, but it seems like it's a basic, like little like mech that just sort of fights. I mean, I don't know where this thing honestly falls. It's not seem niche to me, but it's not amazing. So basic is the best place for it. Javelin JVN 10P. No Indo Steel, no Ferro Fibrous, no XL, no doubles. Amazingly low armor for a 30 ton mech with a street with two streak twos and an SRM six rack. 696 movement profile. It really needs something in the upgraded tech sphere to make this a good mech. If it had double heat sinks, it could be jumping and firing constantly. Uh, if it had ferro fibers, it'd have more armor. If it had endo steel, it would have more armor, probably. It's really missing something. This, I don't know what this thing's battlefield role is exactly either, because it's just an SRM carrying light mech that's got acceptable speed, but it has no defense. No armor. But it's not fast enough to rely on its speed. So, I don't know where this mech falls. It feels like it's a niche mech. Like it's built for one role and one role only. Like maybe going after other light mechs. So I think this thing's going to fall in the niche category. Next up is the SDR-7M Spider. Indo-Steel and Ferrofibrous. Two upgrade technologies. And yet again, as a running theme, no double heat sinks. 10 singles. For a mech that moves 8, 12, 8, that's good. But with almost no armor. This thing is super lightly armored. It's got 3 tons of fair fibrous armor. That's it. Now, 8, 12, 8 means it should be hard as heck to hit. Thank goodness. But boy, that those heat sinks means it really can't jump and shoot either. Which is sad. Because it mounts two medium pulse lasers in the center torso, which are great weapons to jump with and shoot with. So the lack of double heat sinks really hurts this mech. And yet, it still feels like it's a really good mech. Because you kind of jump in, shoot, jump out, cool. Jump in, shoot, jump out, cool. So, the lack of doubles is what's keeping it down in my opinion. So it can't jump, shoot, jump, shoot, jump, shoot, jump, shoot constantly. So I'm going to put it in the basic category. It feels like it should be better. But it's just being held back. The UM R63 Urban Mech. I'm going to say something about this one. It's still not good. I mean, I don't like Urban Mechs, period. But with an LB10X, at least this thing can reach out and touch someone at further than 9 hexes away. Which is good. Sadly, it only mounts one ton of ammo, so you have to choose Solid Shot or Cluster Shot at the beginning of the game. And that can make a big difference. I mean, honestly, it mounts a small pulse laser. Yay, anti-infantry weapon. But if it didn't have that, it could have another ton of ammo, which would be better. And or it could have endosteel, which is lacking endosteel. It's lacking ferrofibers. It's lacking double heat sinks. And bizarrely, it mounts an extra heat sink. It has 11 heat sinks, and it does not need 11 heat sinks. This thing will never generate 10 points of heat. It's, it's a wasted tonnage again. It's better than the basic urban mech, but the problem is, it still depresses me. The F9S Firestarter. Here we have a mech that, again, running theme for this book for the light mechs. No double heat sinks. Which just makes me unhappy. Especially with this thing, because this thing with doubles could probably be functional. But it just isn't. It's got 10 singles, and it mounts 
four flamers, two medium lasers, and a small laser. Thank goodness flamers don't require ammo because this thing can cook alive. 35 tons with a 696 movement profile is pretty good. It has endo steel, but no ferro fibers. It's got an okay amount of armor. It could use a bit more. It's, it's a little light, but not super light. And it has a rear mounted weapon, a rear mounted flamer, which is bizarre, but it just cooks alive. I still th this is a very much, honestly, fire starters are a niche mech in every category, no matter what. They're great for doing things like lighting the battlefield on fire, burning some forests, setting buildings on fire, killing infantry. And it'd be so much better at its job if it had double heat sinks. But again, that seems to be a running theme in this book. A lack of double heat sinks. But I know, I know there are some mechs that have doubles in here, which is what confuses me. That so far, it's gotta be one of the cheapest upgrades you can ever do for any mech in the game ever is double heat sinks. But so far, here we are with another mech without double heat sinks. The JR7K Jenner. This is the upgrade of the unarmored Jenner from 3025. This thing does not have endo steel, but it does have ferro fibers, thankfully, which is good because it's really light in the armor. It's got the 711.5 movement profile, just like beforehand. Two mediums on each arm, an SRM4 rack, and it adds case. Yay! The Jenner in this book is not good. The SRM4 and the ammo is just, with 10 singles, it's not effective. You're, you're all close range weaponry. You can't run it without cooking. Jay yeah, can run in shoot and jump out that's gonna be your solution to a lot of things with this mech because your basic guns are producing like 15 heat plus movement it's really a scout killer in my opinion so i think it feels like a very niche mech first time i'd love to like it i mean i love the jenner that's armored with the four medium lasers that's one of my favorite mechs in the game this one is not one of my favorite mechs in the game the pnt 10k panther indo steel yay good check mark no ferro fibers Boo. No double heat sinks. That's a big problem. That's a very big problem because this thing is mounting an ER PPC. That's awesome that it's a light mech with a PPC. And it's nice this PPC has no minimum range and shoots further. It's a real issue because it only has 13 single heat sinks. Firing its main gun is already doing two points of heat to it without moving. And it's slow. 464. Armor factor is pretty good. It's a little pop and shoot sniper. The ERPPC, though, I think is a good weapon on this thing. I really wish it had double heat sinks. If this thing had double heat sinks, I don't think I could complain about it. As it is, it feels like it's. Between these, I'm going to go a little bit right here because, again, it's mounting an SRM4 and case. And the SRM4 has an Artemis 4 fire control system. Yay! Why not do an SRM6 rack? The RVN 3L Raven. No window steel, but it does have ferro fibers. And, amazingly, this is our first mech in the book with an XL engine. That's nice. Sort of. It's only got light armor for a 6.9, zero, 35 ton mech. But, this thing mounts an electronics powerhouse suite. It's got an SRM6, two medium lasers, has a NARC missile beacon with two tons of ammo, a big to probe, a tag, Guardian ECM, and case. That's a that's an electronics test bed mech for the Inner Sphere. I always have liked the Raven in many ways. And this mech kind of combines combat with like literally screwing over the enemy's electronics big time. So that makes me very happy. I think that even with this thing's light armor, which it could have been improved by having Indo Steel. To uh, give it like a little bit more armor, like a ton and a half more armor. I still think though that this right here is the first stellar mech because this thing does a lot. It's a very very effective little package. The WLF2 Wolfhound. No window steel, no ferro fibers. But here we have another first in the book. This is our first mech with double heat sinks. Everybody clap. Double heat sinks, which it needs. It's a six nine mech. With good armor. I mean, we're like talking like really good armor for its weight ratio. Weight. Mounting an ER large, three forward facing medium lasers, and a questionably included rear mounted medium laser. You take out that rear, you add one more heat sink, and this is like a flawless mech then. Rear weapons. Why? 
Especially if you're ER large laser in an arm, you can just turn around and point that behind yourself and fire! Rear mounted weapons. You always get me. I don't understand that at all. I'll never understand those. Still, the Wolfhound is going to straight up to the top in the stellar category. No XL engine. This thing is just a wonderful mech. Those medium lasers are mounted in the torsos in the front, one in each side, one in the center torso, making it durable and hard to kill. That ER large laser on the arm, good enough speed profile, heavy armor for a 35 tonner, and double heat sinks. I'm honestly, that just makes me happy all the way around. The ASN 23 Assassin. 7.11.7, no endosteel, no ferrofibrous, no XL, and no doubles. Again, leaving all four checkboxes for basic advanced tech open and unclicked. Lighter armor than the Wolfhound by almost half. Not quite, but almost half. I mean, it's bleh. A medium pulse laser and an LRM-5 with an Artemis IV. Oh, I can't think of many other places you can waste an Artemis on. Oh, wait, an SRM-2 rack is a great waste of an Artemis. Ugh. I just, I will never figure out what the design of most of the basic assassins is supposed to be. It's, like, worse than a lot of lights. It weighs more. Yay. 7.11.7, that's all it's got is going for it. The one thing I'll say is it can jump and fire the medium pulse laser and only tick up a point of heat. Yay. Assassins tend to depress me, and this one is no different. CDA 3M Cicada. Hello. Mech. No endosteel. No ferrofibrous. But this is the first time we're going to get both an XL engine and double heat sinks put together. Oh yeah. We're talking a 812 40-ton mech with pathetically light armor and bogglingly mounting a medium laser, an Ultra AC-5, another medium laser, and a small pulse. Yeah, okay. Why do we have doubles on this thing? I, I know, I'm the big double, I'm the big guy talking about double heat sinks, but this thing generates eight points, nine points of heat if double tapping and firing the small pulse, no, small pulse, two, ten points of heat, we can easily handle our heat in this thing. What this loadout me needs, and I think one of the variants that we're not really looking at does properly, is puts an energy weapon in, in place of the Ultra AC-5. Ultra ACs are not great in my opinion. They're one of those weapons that requires, that has a, like, lower than a 54% chance of hitting twice. And you have a chance of, and a 1, and a one in 36 chance of jamming. I, I don't really like that too great. Ultra 20s are a different story because they're scary as all heck. But Venusaur doesn't have those at this time. They only have the Ultra 5s and only have the LB10s. For 10 tons in this thing, a better gun could have been put in here. Several better guns. Two ER large lasers. An, e, uh, an ER PPC. Something. This just feels like it wasn't designed well. I really want to like this mech. And it really resembles a scout killer. And that's what I'm going to put it at is in the niche category. It doesn't, it doesn't truly depress me. It just gets really close to depressing me. Which is sad for the first mech that combines doubles and XLs in this book. Next up. The CLNT-2-3U Clint. Wow, what a number series. No window steel, no ferrofibrous, no XL engine. But we've got double heat sinks, which is good, because this thing mounts an ER PPC and two medium pulse lasers. It's also light in the armor as well, but with a 696 profile, it's essentially the same role as the Panther. It weighs like five tons more, lower armor than a Panther, you jump, shoot the RPPC, jump away. Handle some of the medium pulse lasers, jump jump away. 696 gives it plenty of flexibility. You can fire an ER medium and a medium pulse laser and walk without generating any heat. It's got some options. I, I think this is a very basic mech. I mean, I almost want to put it up into amazing, but it, the lack of armor really kind of gets it for me. I mean, this thing is just low on armor. The HER 5S Hermes 2. Endosteel, yay. No ferrofibrous, which is fine. No XL, but double heatsinks again. We're, we're hitting more double heatsinks now. Once we get out of the lights, we kind of get tick, 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 double heatsinks, which is good. Good armor. I mean, not the best. It definitely doesn't have the best armor, but it's up there pretty close to near max for, arm, for armor on this weight class. But it mounts another Ultra AC5, 
a medium pulse laser and a flamer. It's an eclectically weird set of weapons that once again, without this mech having jump jets, it doesn't generate that much heat. So it's weird. We're getting double heat sinks on mechs that don't generate enough heat to really need them. And we're not getting doubles on mechs that desperately, desperately need double heat sinks. I don't know where this thing falls off the top of my head. I don't really like it, but I'm going to put it in the basic because it's got solid armor, even though the weapon loadout is kind of trash. The VT-5M Vulcan. Indo-Steel. Double heat sinks. Two checkboxes. All right, we're starting off well. Light on the armor again. But it has a large pulse, a medium pulse, a flamer, and a machine gun. So it has two anti-mech weapons and two anti-infantry weapons. 22 heat dissipation points. 11 doubles. Ah, oh, that makes my ha makes me happy because of the 696 profile. This thing can jump maximally and fire all of its guns and still be doing okay. I mean, not great. It'll still be cooking a little bit, but it can be do it can handle it a little. I mean, we're that that's really close. We're 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 in the really good range. In fact, I forgot that's 11 doubles. I think this thing might be hit efficient all the way around. I'm not doing the math in my head at the moment. I'm just saying that I think it. But I like this mech. This mech. If it didn't have, if it had better armor, would be a really top-notch mech overall. But as it is, with the mobility, I think it can handle the lighter armor. It's going to go in the amazing category. The Whitworth. WHT2. It's slow, like all Whitworths. It's got good armor, like most Whitworths. It has lost... Oh well, no, it has one medium laser and two LRM-10s. The LRM-10s are now mounted to Artemis IV FCS. Which is good because this thing's lacking any other form of events technology. Not even case. This is a hyper niche mech. It's a long range support mech that weighs 40 tons. That's it. It's And it's good in that niche. But it's niche. BJ2 Blackjack. No Indo, no Pharaoh, no XL. But double heat sinks. Which is a good darn thing. Because this thing has two ER large lasers. And only 11 doubles. It can't fire both of its primary weapons without overheating, but it's close enough. And especially jump jets. It's a little, it's another, it's a very much in line with the Panther idea. Shoot, jump back and cool. Reposition, shoot, jump back and cool. Kind of like alternating turns. What is truly stupid on this thing, though, is it has four streak SRM2s. I'm not a big fan of SRM2s. I'm more accepting of streaks, but four of them, it could have dropped out two of them it kept itself with enough close range defensive weaponry and mounted more heat sinks it has pretty good armor i don't really this seems like a basic mech to me and it's it would be amazing actually as a blackjack if it didn't have all those streak twos i just don't care for streak twos the hct 5s hatchet man 464 relatively slow has an xl engine no double heat sinks that's an issue ferro fibers armor but no endo steel so it's got some upgrades and some non-upgrades. It has a hatchet, which is awesome. Always awesome. Hatchets are awesome, plain and simple. LB-10X AC, that's good. And three medium pulse lasers. The bonkers thing to me is always why this thing has a medium pulse laser in each arm when it has a hatchet arm. Put two mediums in one arm and the hatchet in the other arm. That way you can fire all your weapons you want to and then hit somebody in the head. Still, it's got like the best armor we've seen in the book so far. It does weigh 45 tons, so it should have the heaviest armor. And it does have the heaviest armor. So it's got that. It's really only lacking in the heat sink department, which if it, again, if it had doubles, it'd be an amazing mech. It would be an amazing mech. It actually might be a stellar mech if it had doubles. As it is, and I hate to do this, it's just kept back from greatness. It's basic because it's kept back from greatness. It could be so great with one tweak. Double heat sinks. As it is, it can't even fire the medium pulse laser without overheating. Yeah. It's so close. It's so close. And the thing was, if it had doubles, it'd be, it would never overheat. It would never be generating enough to overheat. So, it's just so close. I, mean, I want to put it in amazing. I'm trying to convince myself to put it in amazing. But I'm not going to. I really want to, but I just can't. VND3L Vindicator. No window steel. No, uh, no ferro fibers, no XL engine. Double heat sinks, though. And way too many of them. 15 doubles for a 464 mech. Now, it does have an ER PPC, but it has a medium pulse laser and LRM5 as well. It's got no K weapons loadout. It's got good armor. 
just a little bit too much on the heat side. Which is kind of sad. I mean, if you dropped out three of those double heat sinks, you could slap that LRM5 up to an LRM10. If you had Indo Steel, you could, and dropped one of those heat sinks, you could drop the LRM5. This thing is, it's so close to being really good. It, it's, it's falling that, it's falling just short again, and it's falling short in a far different way than the prior mix. So I, I'm going to put this in the basic category again. It, it, it's got so much potential that it just can't fully fulfill. The WFT-1 <laughs> Wolf Trap. Indosteel XL engine, no doubles, no ferrofibers. But it's a 6.9, 45 tonner. It's a touch light in the armor, but it has an LB-10, two medium lasers, and an LRM-10. has case. It only has single heat sinks, but that LB-10 with the two mediums can fire and run all day without generating any heat, generating any overheat. Or turn off the mediums and fire the LB-10 and the LRMs, and you're still not going to be overheating. It's a good mech. I mean, this is this is amazing, but not stellar. Not quite stellar. And that's because if it had it needs a little more armor to be stellar. Still, I like the Wolf Trap quite a bit. Also, that LRM-10 is, LRM is mounted in the CT, so it can keep firing it for a while. CN9D Centurion. Indosteel, XL engine, no ferrofibrous, and no double heat sinks. But it doesn't need doubles. Here we have another mech. This thing always has the same loadout as the Wolf Trap, only it turns around a medium laser facing rearward. Slightly more armor than the Wolf Trap, but the same speed profile. It weighs more, that's why it's got a little bit more flexibility to it. But it makes me... Oh, and the LRM-10 on this one has, an, has Artemis 4 versus the Wolf Trap, which doesn't have Artemis 4. That rearward medium laser always makes me sad in the Centurion. Because if it had been forward-facing, it'd be just so much more effective. Especially since you can bring the LB-10X around to the back and fire your arms that way. So you don't have to worry about having the rearward protection. Especially not in this mech. This mech has got is good. And that's what it is. It's amazing, but it's not stellar because it's just lacking. Honestly, it's got a rearward map weapon, and I hate rearward mounted weapons. I really do. If that hasn't become amazingly apparent, I will always consider a rearward mounted weapon to be half as effective. Not even half as effective as a forward mounting counterpart. ENF 5D Enforcer. XL engine, ferrofibrous armor, no window steel, and no double heat sinks, which it really needs. It really needs double heat sinks. Why? It has an ER large laser. And it can jump 5. That's 17 heat right there without any other weapons. It's got 12 singles. That's 2 wasted tons if it had double heat sinks instead. That's 2 tons you could have devoted to something else. It doesn't need more armor. It's got good armor. It's got okay. It's got good enough movement. It, it It's just those, those single heat sinks drag it down. Drag anything that says ER large laser from the inner sphere period. If you don't have doubles, don't mount that weapon. Don't mount that weapon. It's not worth it. A basic large laser is better than an ER large laser with single heat sinks. Flat out. Never mount an ER if you have singles. I'm going to put this in basic because it's got the durability. Yeah, it's basic. It's, it's not quite bad enough to be niche. It doesn't depress me. But it's it's definitely very far from amazing because of that one big issue. HBK 5M Hunchback. We have no window steel, no ferrofibrous, and no XL engine. We do have double heat sinks, but I'm not 100% certain why. Because we don't jump, the Hunchback doesn't jump, it's a 460, has an AC20, two medium lasers, and a small pulse laser. It doesn't need double heat sinks. Here's all those mechs that boggles my mind. It's like, oh, why? Why do mechs that don't need it have it? And mechs that need it don't have it. I know it's some sort of fluffy thing going on, but it intentionally stupid designing kind of upsets me in many ways. This thing will never depress me because it's got an AC-20. And an AC-20 is fun, but it th this thing really... I hate this a hunchback. It falls into the niche category because... It's really only good at brawling, and it has to survive to the brawl. It usually can, has good enough armor. It usually can get up there, but it also only carries a single ton of AC-20 ammo. That means you can't waste shots. It's just too limited. 
And if it had double heat, if it had three less double heat sinks, which it doesn't need 13, it can have more ammo. It can have a lot of things. They're, it's a, it's almost oppressing. The TBT 7M Trebuchet. Indo Steel, XL, and Doubles. That's three awesome techs. 585 movement profile, light armor, but doesn't need the armor as much. This thing is got two LRM-15 racks, a NARC missile beacon, and three medium lasers. It really needs more LRM ammo. That's the only thing holding this thing back from being really awesome. As it is, I think this is, a tr is an amazing mech. It's got good speed profile. It's a touch light in the armor, but it can handle itself. And those two 15 racks, solid weapons. So this is an amazing mech. DV-7D Dervish. Indo steel, double heat sinks, and ferrofibrous armor. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, better armor than the trebuchet, with two tin racks, two mediums, and two streak twos. It not great at any one thing. The tins are fine, and the mediums are great. Has case, which is nice, but the streak twos are just well, they're better than the basic streaks or the basic SRM twos. So I guess I can't complain too much. This, I think, this is an amazing mech. And I realize I forgot to put a picture of it. So just pretend that I put the dervish right here. I'm such a goofball at times. My bad on that one. I forgot this. I guess I'm rating 52 mechs. There's only 51 in the image, though. <laughs> My bad. Oops. HOP 4D Hoplite. Advanced tech doesn't exist on this thing, really, aside from the LB-10X. Really heavy armor, slow movement, and two guns. LB-10, LRM-5. Huh, I don't know this thing. This thing feels like a niche, like, long-range support mech that's just not very good. It can take a punch. It really should have better weapons than that for 55-tonner. It's really just kind of lacking in all the categories. DRG 5K Grand Dragon. Really fast. 6.9. It's got a 360XL engine. No endo steel, no ferrofibers, but it has double heat sinks, which it needs because it has an ERPPC. There's that keyword again, Intersphere ER, uh, but two rear-mounted medium lasers. This thing moves 6.9. You don't need rear weapons. And with 26, 26 points of heat dissipation, if those two lasers were turned around forward, this thing would be a lethal combat machine. As it is, it just, it's just basic. It could be better. It could be so much better just by turning two weapons frontwards. QK5, QKD 5M Quick Draw. I'm going to say right now, this thing depresses me. This is a garbage pile mech. Why? I mean, yay doubles. No, it doesn't matter. This thing has two rear-mounted weapons. You already heard me complain about those enough. But it has literally the worst weapon designed in the game. It has an SRM one-shot launcher. These weapons are so bad that if I ever see a design with it, I literally will not... I don't even bother. That design does not deserve to be in the game. One-shot weapons are truly garbage. They weigh a half a ton more for one single shot instead of spending a half a ton to get a full ton of ammo. That is just bad design. Flat out. Period. Full stop. Done. I'm done with the mech. It's garbage. AXM 1N Axeman. XL engine. Double heat sinks. Ferrofibrous armor. Tick, 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 tick. Hello, AC-20 with a thing with the hatchet. Ha! Ah, don't get close to this sucker. You're gonna die. Two tons of ammo for the AC-20. That's good. Has me three medium lasers and a large pulse laser. Again, good. Not the most heat-efficient mech in the world. It definitely could use some more heat sinks, but it does have ten doubles. So it can handle a lot of the heat, but not all the heat. Especially since it does jump. It's a 464. Still... I think this is a stellar mech. An AZ-20 with a hatchet with pulse weaponry? Oh, that's a good time. CPLT C3 Catapult. When you want to bring an artillery system in the form of a mech, there's this thing. It is, to me, yay artillery. That's fun. We've seen a, we've seen a mech with tag so far. We've only seen the one. I think we've only seen one mech with tag, the Raven. So it belongs with that mech, because that's what you want when you're firing your, art your Arrow 4 artillery system. He only has one ton of ammo for it. I, I, this just feels like to me like a downgrade from the basic old catapult. And considering it has no advanced tech, no XL, no doubles, no endo steel, no ferrofibers, it has 15 single heat sinks, four medium lasers, 
and that massive tonnage Arrow 4. This is a niche mech. It's when you want your artillery in a mech form. JM6 DD Jaeger mech. XL engine with hyper light armor for a 65 tonner. Two Ultra AC5s and two AC2s. Case, yay! But no double heat sinks. Which, be honest, if you're firing just the auto cannons, you really don't need the double heat sinks. That's only six points of heat all total, plus your movement. It does have two medium pulse lasers, but it's just that XL engine on a heavy mech with no armor that really depresses me. I don't think this is depressing. Yeah, it's a niche mech. It's a niche art. It's a ballistic long range sniper mech that doesn't serve much of that purpose. Don't like it very much. CES 3R Caesar. This is our first Gauss rifle. This is our first headshot sniping monster mech. It's a 280 XL engine with no endo steel, no ferro fibers, but it has double heat sinks, which is good because it has four medium pulse lasers, an ERPPC, and a Gauss rifle. Good armor, not, not full armor, but good armor. And it does have two rearward mounted medium pulses. Uh, if they're pulses, at least that feels a little bit better. But that's four tons of weaponry you're dedicating to something behind you. Don't like that. The Gauss is in one torso next to the ERPPC in an arm. That is a bit weird. I put the ERPPC on the other side, I think. It would have been better. But hey, whatever. It's still got a Gauss rifle and an ERPPC, meaning this thing is dishing out damage at very long distances. Very threateningly. It's an amazing mech. It's not stellar because it has those medium pulses in the rear, but it is an amazing mech. It's also pretty heat efficient. I really like it. I really, really like it. I just don't like weapons that go backwards. You know that. The Cataphract CTF 3D. No inner steel, no ferro fibers, no K, no XL, and no doubles. Weird. This thing is like a Caesar copy, which is what they're talking about. The actual fluff. The Caesar and the Cataphract were co-designed opposing force things or whatever. Uh, but this thing mounts an LB-10X and an Ultra AC-5 versus a Gauss rifle and an ERPPC. Now my brain tells me the Gauss rifle and the ERPPC are a far better combo. This thing only mounts basic medium lasers, two of which go backwards. It doesn't have the XL engine, which means it's not as weak to taking a side torso being lost. And the armor factor is slightly higher. I actually like both the mechs about equally. I just think this one's got less guns. Less effective guns. But it's still pretty darn good. GHR 5J Grasshopper. I This really feels like a downgrade of the basic Grasshopper. And, even more idiotically, it maintains the exact same heat sinks as the basic Grasshopper. But because it has an ER large laser... It's not as good. It also ripped out some medium lasers to stick in to up to change the missiles to a streak SRM-2 and to put in an anti-missile system. It gained no advanced techs, no XLs, no endo, no ferro, and no doubles. But it put an ER large laser in. It, it's a downgrade from the basic grasshopper. This is a downgrade. That just... That depresses me, and I hate that. I love grasshoppers, but this one is just why. Take the basic grasshopper any day of the week over this version. It's a better mech. It's a better mech. Flat out, the 3025 grasshopper is a better mech. ON1M Orion. 300XL engine and double heat sinks. Tick, tick. Good enough. LB10, LRM20, SRM4, NARC, and double mediums. No rearward mounted laser weapons, very high armor, and a 4.6 movement profile. This thing's a lethal monster. I love it. I love this mech. I really do. It's stellar. AWS 9M Awesome. 20 double heat sinks and a 320X engine. That makes this faster than the basic Awesome. Good armor. The problem is it mounts three ERPPCs. Three ERPPCs, same damage as basic PPCs, better range, no minimums but 50% more heat. Double heat sinks, basic PPCs. This thing's an awesome monster. Double heat sinks and ER PPCs. This thing is a little bit hot running. Then it has like backup of small pulse, medium pulse, and two street twos. That's fine. It For its new speed profile, that's, that's acceptable. I just wish it maintained basic PPCs over ER PPCs. Still, it's an amazing mech. I think I like the original 3PPC one better, 
but this is still a pretty amazing mech. CGR 3K Charger. Last time, we said this was a depressing mech. Let's see what it looks like now. It does have a 400 XL engine, because if it didn't have an XL engine, it would still be garbage. It has light armor, but it does have double heat sinks, and then it has four medium pulse lasers. Okay, okay, medium pulses on an 80 ton mech that moves at 585 is acceptable. Then it mounts an LRM-20. Why an LRM-20? Why not anything else that makes sense? A large pulse laser and some additional heat sinks. Okay, not that fine. How about we put an auto cannon instead? Uh, how about how about two SRM-6 launchers? Something that makes sense. The LRM-20 is a bonkersly weird weapon to go on that mech. Especially at speed profile. This is not a long-range sniping mech. This is a I-want-to-get-in-your-face-and-attack-you mech. Which is kind of also silly because, well, I'd love to get it there and punch someone that has a medium laser and each, a medium pulse laser in each arm. So, wibble dibble. It doesn't depress me anymore, but it's a niche mech. And what that niche is, is I don't know. The HTM 27T Hatamotochi. Good armor, endo steel, no fair fibers, no XL, and no doubles. Oh, that, that, that lack of doubles hurts this mech badly because it mounts two PPCs, two SRM6s, and that's it for only 18 singles. If this thing had doubles, it'd be good. It'd be good. As it is, it doesn't depress me, but it's just basic. It could be so much better. It could be so much better. VTR 9K Victor. Endo steel, and that's it. No doubles, no XL. We mount a Gauss rifle. That's always good. It's a bit light on the armor, but it's a 464 with a Gauss rifle. That's the reason why we don't need double heat sinks. It's got too many pulses to serve for, for jumping, and I think it's actually a perfectly heat efficient mech, which is nice. It's just, if it had doubles, it could save those five tons for some more armor, and maybe upgrade the SRM4 to an SRM6. It could be better, but as it is, it's a I think it qualifies as an amazing mech, mainly because Gauss rifles are just amazing always. So, yeah, that makes it really good. The ZEU 9S Zeus. No Indo, but it does have Pharaoh, no XL, and doubles. Doubles are good. It needs to double badly. A little bit less armor than the Victor without the jump jets. It also mounts three long range, we range weaponry that really consume those heat sinks. It's got an ER PPC, an ER large laser, and an LRM 15. Right there, that's pretty much like, good on the heat, because you're going to be firing all of those and cooking up. Only has a single ton of LRM ammo, it could use another one, which could have easily gotten if it didn't have that stupid rearward facing medium pulse laser. It's got a forward mounted medium pulse laser, which is just fine, but it's also wasting two tons on a rearward mounted one. I would, I, I really like this mech a lot, but I can't put it any higher than amazing because that's two wasted tons. CRK 5003-2 Katana, aka Crockett. No end of steel, no ferrofibrous, no axle engine, and no double heat sinks. That's just weird. Okay, 353, so it's slow but jumpy. Two large lasers, two SRM6s, and LB10. It's a little bit heat hot on the heat because the large lasers and the SRM6s are cooking a little bit with only 20 singles. If this thing had 15 doubles, fantastic. As it is, not so fantastic. But not terrible. Light armor again, though. It's only got the same armor as a Victor. These are big, heavy mechs that have less armor than, like, some of these... Well, these are big assault mechs with less armor than some heavies. Which is kind of a bit weird. I think the Crockett really feels like a basic mech. It... it, it I almost want to put an amazing, but not quite. The SGH-2F Shogun. No XL, no Endo, no Pharaoh, no doubles. Again, bonkers. Why not? Especially since this thing has an ERPPC. ERPPC, two LRM-15 racks, two SRM-6 racks, on a 353 profile with only 17 single heat sinks. You can't even jump and fire the ERPPC without cooking some. You can run and fire the ERPPC and nothing else would be just fine. It has better armor. At a relatively decent amount of armor, but it's just, it's missing something. It's really missing something. And that's something is either double heat sinks or endo steel or both. Really, the double heat sinks. Heat efficiency, heat efficiency, heat efficiency is always going to be an issue. And we we're happiest, I was happiest in the mediums and the heavies because those seem to have doubles and pretty good heat. 
We get back to the assaults, we're lacking that heat efficiency again. The Shogun feels like it's basic because it's durable. STK-5M Stalker. No XL, no Indo, no Pharaoh. That's fine. It has 17 doubles. It's got pretty good armor. Two 10 racks, four medium lasers, two 6 racks, an ER large and a NARC, weapon, a NARC missile beacon. This thing is a weapons monster bizarre zeppelin on legs. I like this mech. The way it brackets all of its weapons with those double heat sinks is it can fire constantly as long as you're firing the right bracket of weapons without overheating. It's got good armor, not as good as the Shogun, but got good armor. Yeah, this is going to qualify as a stellar mech. It's amazing what double heat sinks can do for you. CP-11A Cyclops. 4.6 mech that go, that's a 90 tonner without an XL engine. It doesn't depress me for one reason. Again, it mounts a Gauss rifle. This thing has light armor. This thing has a medium's armor. But it has a Gauss rifle and LRM-10, so there's no reason for this mech to ever truly get close to combat. You sit back and you shoot at range. You sit back and you shoot at range. And you know what? It's passable for that. It's a basic mech. It just can't be any better with that light armor it has. MAL-1R Mauler. XL engine. Double heat sinks. Low armor. No endosteel. No ferrofibers. So far, it sounds like it should be a pretty good mech, right? Two ER large lasers. That's a problem. It can't handle that heat by two points. It's 11 doubles. It needs to be able to handle 24 points of heat for the ER large lasers. Oh, hang on. We got two more two more weapons there long range. We got two LRM-15s. Okay, we're really cooking now if we want to follow our all range, long range weapons. Oh, wait. Hang on. I'm not done. This thing weighs 24 tons on AC-2s. 24 tons on auto cannon twos. You know where this thing goes? It's depressing. That's 24 tons. You could fix your heat issues. You could upgrade those 15 launchers to 20 launchers. You could have had a really good mech. But no, what'd you do instead? 24 tons. Oh, sorry, I forgot the ammo. 26 tons of auto cannons. That's more than a quarter of your weight dedicated to eight points of damage max. I don't have words for how bad that is. BNC 5S Banshee. 4.6, double heat sinks, XL engine. Lightish on the armor, not super light, but definitely light for a 95 tonner. It has 14 double heat sinks, which is very good because it mounts two ER PPCs. Ugh, running hot. But it has a gas rifle. Okay, that's good. Has an SRM-6. Has two forward mounting medium lasers, two forward mounted small lasers, and two rearward mounted medium lasers. Hey, I have an idea. Drop those two rearward mounted medium lasers and tick on two more heat sinks. That'd be better. I mean, that's actually a really good weapons loadout. It just runs hot, very hot. It's got good speed. It's just rearward mounted lasers, again, blech, and the lack of heat sinks. But it's a the, overall, this mech is a pretty amazing mech. I really have to say that. The Banshee holds its own constantly. I mean, that Gauss rifle, those ERPPCs, very solid. Hey, if you dropped one of those medium lasers, you could have put another ton of ammo on the Gauss rifle so it'd have more than eight shots. That'd be another thing to do. Rear-mounted weapons are a drag on a mech. ANH 2A Annihilator. When you want to bring a shotgun to the field, no, when you want to bring four shotguns to the field, you want to bring this mech. Four LB-10X ACs. No double heat sinks, no XL engine, no Indo steel, no ferro fibers. It couldn't fit that in this thing. This thing is just eating up its critical slots with LB 10 X's, and it carries four tons of ammo, so you can easily divide that between shotgun shells and basic uh, cannons. It's got four medium pulse lasers. So that's not bad. Which it needs some help there. I mean, the depressing thing about this mech is it's a two three speed mech. It's slow. It's sin. Four LB 10 X's. It's hilarious though. I. It's also low on the armor. This is a bizarre mech, and I'm going to throw it in the niche category, because it really is niche. It's literally the, I need to have all the shotguns today. I can't dislike it that much, but it's a niche mech. I mean, it really, it's, it's a weird mech. AS-7K Atlas. 300XL engine. Okay. Max armor. It's got to be max armor. It's an Atlas. Well, three points off of max. It's got 304 of 307. Gauss rifle, LRM-20. That's good. Oh, but hang on, we have a problem. We have 20 single heat sinks. Now, I understand this thing 
with the engine rating and the space is probably eating up, there might, might be some space issues for doubles. But to compound the problem of the 20 single heat sinks, so we have two ER large lasers. Gauss rifle, LRM-20, two ER large lasers. This thing is really cooking on heat if it fires all of its long-range weapons constantly. But don't worry, we decided to devote four tons to rearward-facing medium pulse lasers again. I don't know why. Four more heat sinks. At least then you could handle the ER large lasers firing forward. Or maybe give some more ammo to the LRM-20. Or something. I actually really like the mech, though. It, if it had one fix, it would be probably a stellar mech. As it is, I'm going to rate it in amazing, even though it cooks alive. You just don't use both ER large. You want to fire one ER large, one LRM-20, and one Gauss rifle. Then you're happy. The medium lasers going backwards are are a waste of four tons, but that's only 4% of your weight. Whatever. It also, the artwork shows what looks like an SRM-6 rack that this thing doesn't carry anymore. So, yay for the artwork not matching the description of the mech. And our last mech of the evening, the IMP-3E Imp. Less armor than Atlas, has an XL engine as well, same speed. But hey, we put 10 more tons into single heat sinks. This thing carries 30 double or 30 single heat sinks. That's fun. Which means it can fire its two ER medium or ER PPCs without overheating at all, provided it didn't move or fire anything else. Oh, but unfortunately it carries a large pulse laser, two medium pulse lasers, two basic medium lasers, and an LRM-15. Okay. The pulses and basic mediums are all good for close range combat, so you don't have to fire them with ER PPCs. But you get that 15 rack when you're going to cook a little bit. I don't know what to feel with this mech. It's, I think it's basic. It's, doesn't, it's not heat efficient, and it's got so much excess tonnage and heat sinks. And it's mounting those ER PPCs which just cook alive. I mean, it's just a weird mech to me. I, in, at the end of this, I really am looking at this and I'm seeing exactly what I said in the beginning, though. We had a lot of basic mechs. We have more good mechs than bad mechs. And remember, the niche category is not technically always a bad mech, except for maybe the Charger right there. Those are mechs that just have, like, really only one battlefield role, though. They're very niche. There are five depressing mechs, which depresses me. Especially since there's an assault mech in that category. And a heavy mech. Two heavy mechs. That's depressing. That's depressing. That's the, the depressing category is truly depressing to me. And we only have five mechs in the stellar category. But all five mechs in the stellar category, and we don't have a single medium up there. No mediums. You got two lights, two heavies, and an assault. Still, I like all those mechs a whole lot. I like all the amazing mechs a lot. I really do. I mean, the Caesar and the Cataphract are two of my personal favorite mechs of all time. In all truth, I love those mechs. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's feel it's a weird it feels like a weird one because we really did end up with the most mechs in the basic. The basic is the largest category, which I think is probably how it should feel. And I also found it really weird that we did seem to book in the the categories with mechs that lack double heat sinks. Lights lack double heat sinks for the most part, and assaults a lot of them lack double heat sinks. That feels really weird to me. Still, this is how I rated them. All 51 of these, although we talked about 52 mechs. Still, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit like and subscribe. We'll be doing probably one of these rating things. At least one a month is my kind of my, my pace on them, I feel. It's fun. It gives people time to complain enough to me. <laughs> Which I accept. That's just fine. I don't really mind. Everybody has different opinions on mechs they like and how they like them. And what they feel makes a great mech. That, that's actually why Battletech is such an awesome game is because... We sit at a table, you don't know what the guy on the other side of the table is going to, you know, enjoy playing. But you, you don't know you're going to play. There's no one right answer in Battletech. It's just, you know, there are some qualifiers and things you can look at and go, oh, this is a design. This is an intentional design oversight in many ways when they were making these mechs. They wanted them not feel, to not feel perfect, which is good. It means it shows the kind of the universe they're in. But that doesn't mean we can't rank the mechs, which I've done. And if you want to rank them, I'll have a link to the tier list in the description below as well, so you can go in and rank as well. And then you can save it, and eventually we can get enough rankings, we can see what the community thinks overall of mechs, which would be kind of fun. So far that hasn't happened on any of these lists I've done. It would be nice if that happened in the future, though. Overall, I enjoyed doing this. I hope you've enjoyed watching. This is Sleepless Ronin saying, be sure to like, subscribe, definitely comment below, and we'll see you in the future. Sayonara.